to walk through the piece, which was, was kind of cool. So I did it in several places. Um, when we went out to LA, I brought, it's kind of nice because I can just take a tube of these sticks and, uh, and a ball of string and I can set it up anywhere. So I uh, set it up in the backyard of the little bungalow we were staying at. And then I did it one other time at, uh, uh, out at um, Governor's Island and uh, I was part of a art fair out there and did it through the porch and uh, you'd walk through it. Uh, I think that, uh, okay, um, a couple more. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a piece, it's about 18 inches tall. It's uh, a hollow form of, uh, it's, it's wood with a metallic finish on it. It's uh, been rusting uh, over the years. And that hole in the center is a, again, a scribed uh, hole from a, a stone I brought back from Tibet. And, uh, and there's an object hanging inside that. And if you look through it at just the right angle, you, there's another hole in the backside. So you peer, peer through it when that object is rocking, it kind of blocks your vision. Um, and let's see, okay. And this is part of that shaman series. Um, this is uh, about five feet tall. And then we go to, oops, two of those. I think this will be the last image here. And this is an image of, uh, my most, most uh, recent piece, this is a, a piece, uh, this is a series that I'm working on right now of uh, these outdoor sculptures. And uh, it's kind of uh, nice right now. I'm actually doing well with the lockdown because I'm home in my studio every day. And uh, uh, Meg and I bought our little house up here um, about three years ago. And so I'm placing sculptures in the, uh, uh, throughout the, the, the property. So I'm finding uh, little nooks around the property and building the sculpture as a site specific piece there uh, with the idea that I will invite clients over and uh, hopefully uh, they'll find new yards to land in. But uh, it's, been, it's been really fun to, uh, uh, to place these things on the property. And, uh, and I think like I was saying, uh, my, my, summer, my summer activity is really working the, the yard and the landscape and uh, working on the house. And then uh, winter is when I'm really in my studio of uh, producing more sculpture. So, um, with that, I'll walk over to my phone and I'll give you a, a walk down to the studio. Uh, I'll be back. Oops. Um. Hey Robin. Oops. Sorry guys. We need to stop the screen sharing from playing. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that good? Okay. Okay. We all want to do speaker view now. Yeah. How do I do that? Uh, 
Um, well, I just did it for each. Everyone who's watching needs to change to speaker view so they can just see you. Okay. Does that work? I just see you, Robin. That's okay. 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 So are we good to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got, I've got kind of a time. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Where okay. do I switch to speaker view? Um, how do I do yeah. that? Oh, wait. Here's what, okay. Here's what keeps on happening. Every time somebody speaks, their picture becomes the picture. But Robin, I believe you can pin with a spotlight Kurt's screen. Okay, well, why don't I mute everybody else besides Kurt? Okay, because I, I just have a very small image that I'm seeing, but I can do this. Are we good? I still see you, Robin. Um, is that working, Robin? Yeah. Okay. Um, Run property. So I just see you, Robin, and I've got a very, I got a very small screen. Okay. So, anyways, I'm just giving you a little tour around the the property. So these are sculptures that I'm placing in the property, and um, over. There's another one out in the distance here. Um, and uh, I don't know if you see this little, this sculpture here, that's gonna be in the middle of a pond just pretty soon. I'm getting ready to, to put a pond in here. And, and this is uh, where I'm about to build my new studio. That's gonna be cantilevered out. I just sent the plans into the building department yesterday, so. That's my, so I'm pretty excited about that. So uh, there's part of these outdoor sculptures, uh, swing around here. This big rock here is the reason we bought the property. And um, so, uh, and, Again, so I'm doing doing my scribing thing. So I've scribed this bench. Kurt, you're not working so well right rock. now. Oh, really? Oh, am I? Huh? Good. It's working fine for me. You, me too. Oh, I'm muted now. No, I just unmuted you. Okay. Okay, so we're good now. So anyhow, we're working this house. I'm gonna give you a little walk down to the studio and uh, hopefully my audio will continue to work. And um, we'll try not to trip on the way. Um, Always a good plan. Yeah. So uh, you're placing some sculptures around here on the way down. Um, there's a uh, sculpture that's suspended off of a stone here. And um, okay. So that's the current studio in. Of me, so here we go. Full, full deck, and okay, here we are. Um, this is my studio space. Um, this is uh, my clean room, and um, I've got another. Studio. This will be uh, this will be Meg's studio one day when my studio new studio gets built, and then I've got this little trap door down here. 
So I'll stick that phone down there. That's uh, uh, it's a little dark down there. That's that's my wood shop. That's uh, where I do um, my dusty work, and uh, and then I haul it up that ladder and into this little trap door, and then I do my finish work up here. Um, and oh, that's that's my new studio. And, uh, model of my new studio. That's the inside of my new studio where the tools are going to go. And um, so I don't have anything really going on in here right now. So um, I'm just going to kind of walk you back up. Um, the back side of the of the property where I've got some more sculptures being placed. And uh, there's a suspended one that was out there at uh, Saunders Farm last year. And this is where I might trip. I'm kind of working on these stepping stones here. As you can see, this property is uh, almost all rock. So I'm working with rocks and roots everywhere. Oh, here's a relatively new sculpture in its place. And uh, this is my little mosaic step project right now. And more steps in there's a little dark right now for that sculpture, but uh, that's the one that I showed on the on the slideshow. And we're uh, walking through the gate. So the other thing I'm doing here is I'm building this whole property as a place, as a showcase, and uh, I'm going to be teaching classes here. Uh, I've been doing some woodworking classes, but I'm going to be doing some classes in you know landscape design and construction and uh, and it's gonna be set up for people that just want to do the DIY thing and uh, work on their houses and uh, and have fun doing it um, and I'll walk back in um, uh, all the furniture in the house I've been building as well. So uh, our little dining room table and I'm going to get that echo thing going because my other piece is not muted. And okay I'm going to mute myself and go back onto the other um, computer and then I'll take some questions. Okay, Robin, I think I'm right back here. Yep. I'm going to turn this one off. Okay. Am I here? You're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that was odd. Um, so anyhow, that's that's what I've got to show you. So if there's any questions, I'll answer. And uh, oh, thanks for the the, the collapse. No, uh, thank you. This is I think people have really this has been wonderful, Kurt. Oh, I, ha I had the privilege of coming to the uh, your the open studio tour you did last summer, but. Yeah. Um, most people haven't gotten to see your place and your work like this. So this is great. Yeah, well, I really want to open it up, you know, once we're doing visits again, I, 
you know, this is what this place is for, is to bring artists up here, have conversations, uh, uh, drink wine and play music and, uh, you know, enjoy being artists. And, that's right. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the goal behind all of this. And, uh, so anyone who wants to ask a question should make sure they unmute themselves so we can hear you. Uh, Kurt, where is your studio located? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm in Lake Peekskill. Lake Peekskill. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's something I didn't show. We actually, there, there is a, uh, a view of the lake here. And, uh, nice. yeah, funny little community. And uh, it's just been fantastic. And there's a, you know, a fair share of artists around here. So okay. It's about 15 minutes from Peekskill. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, I, thank uh, you, yeah. Glenn. Joanne <laughs> took me there last summer. I can attest to that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's wonderful to see the progress you've made. A lot has happened. The yard, yes, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, has yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I figure I'll do it now while I can and do it as much as I can so I can enjoy yeah. it later. Have you hiked around Blue Mountain Reservation? There's some great erratics up there. No, I haven't. Oh my gosh, you're gonna love it. Really? It's like uh, Empire Rocks all over the place. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. It, it'll be inspiring to, to you, I think. Really. Blue, Blue Mountain? Yeah. Blue Mountain Reservation here in Peekskill. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, they've got windy trails. A lot of people do mountain biking up there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I have heard And of I'm it, a yeah. geocacher, so I've spent quite a few times getting lost up there. Oh. Very cool. I got lost there, and so did my, uh, my husband and his son. Oh, then I'm bound to get lost, because I'm kind of known for getting Near lost. Your <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, I have a question. You mentioned, I think you pointed out one of your very first sculptures. Uh -huh. I'm curious as to how long ago that was made. And my okay. second question has to do with whether you also do anything two-dimensional. Um, first, uh, yeah, the first question, that, that very first piece was uh, dated 1992. So... Um, uh, prior to that, I was doing, uh, like I said, furniture and uh, various woodworks. And uh, two-dimensional, I really, I, I don't. And uh, there was a period of time where I had a, uh, uh, in, a foot injury where I couldn't move around to do sculpture. And I, and I painted for that uh, for about six months. And it, I loved it. And uh, it's just... Uh, uh, there's not enough time. And so, uh, yeah, I, and I love to make things. I, I love the challenges of three dimensions and the, you know, I love the engineering of it. And uh, so uh, I leave that to, to my wife, Meg. She's, she's the two dimensional artist in the family. So um, my question, is, Kurt, how did you make that transition? You were busy making making furniture with sculpture something you always wanted to try well, or how did the tr transition happen you know it was, it was kind of interesting i was uh um uh, working on really high-end houses and then i started building some furniture and uh and the clients you know i was uh i was really using that opportunity to talk to clients uh, about the woods they were choosing to use and i was very involved with the uh, rainforest network back then and so i was using that as an education uh, opportunity to uh, let my rich clients know what's going on in the rainforest and the in the forest industry, and and they really got into it. And I would, you know, there was a man that I built this amazing desk for, and I talked to him a year later, and he said, you know, I just come in every morning and I just rub the wood and I think about the rainforest, and uh, and so it it it. Uh, told me that I, I do have an impact uh, in the world. And so I thought, well, if I can do that with a functional object, you know, where can I go with it with, uh, with sculpture? And, and the, that first one was a demonstration, a woodworking demonstration of mortise and tenon joints and the pieces just started coming together. And I had three sculptures and uh, this old man, Raymond Barnhart, saw those works and he said, young man, we need to have a conversation. And he was, uh, he was, he was an artist in his, his eighties at that time. And we became friends and he said, you've got to make 12 sculptures so you can uh, 
consider a show. And so it was, wow. yeah, yeah. So it just kind of came organically. My sister's a uh, my sister's ten years older than me, and she's she's a she's an artist, and my brother is twelve years older than me, and he's a scientist. So I think we've got that kind of inclination. Okay. Yeah, Joanne. Yeah, you have uh, you that cardboard piece that you did of Central Park. What did you call it again? Um, that was that it was Umpire Rock. The name of the piece, the show was called Scribing the Void. Okay, that piece, are you doing any more with cardboard at all? Well, the cardboard was just to used to make the templates. And okay. then, yeah, and then I, then I went from the cardboard to, in that case, plywood. Okay. And, uh, and that's often what I'll do is I'll, I'll make templates out of, you know, stiff paper or cardboard when I'm okay. trying to shape to a rock and then I trans, transfer that over to the wood. Yeah, I didn't know if you were familiar with uh... Uh, the cardboard Bernini that um, the artist did, where he reproduced the whole this whole sculpture of uh, I forget who it was, and out of cardboard. Did oh, you really? Know, really? Are you familiar with this art? Um, no, I don't. Know. It's called cardboard Bernini, and it was over at the Hammett Museum. Is anybody else familiar with this artist? And he had he did this huge gigantic sculpture out of cardboard, and the whole piece was that you know. It, he got recycled cardboard. He made, it, it's gorgeous. It, it's absolutely with, with um, uh, gods and, and, and fire and all kinds of stuff and clouds and huge, huge. And then he just let nature take care of it. And it oh, eventually wonderful. dissolved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just wondering if, if you, if you worked more uh, with cardboard. It's a great material. I do like using cardboard. I make one comment. Sure. About Kurt's sculpture um i don't know the name of it the one that we've just been discussing of the rock in central park right and, the the void. Light, and everyone can see it oh because it's in the coach store at fifth avenue and 54th street and if you just go in there and go upstairs it's there full time for the public wow I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, you know, no, this it's, was one of those, one of those. It's exciting, you know, and we can all go see it. Yeah. Well, eventually, in a year. In a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's funny. That's one of those grand sculptures, and you know, I think we all know as an artist, as artists, you know how rare that we sell works, at least for me. But it's funny. I'll make pieces that seem to be sellable. They'll they'll fit on a coffee table. They would fit in a house, and I've. I've got a lot of those around here. And then I'll do something that's just completely off the wall like that, uh, that installation. There's no way that would ever sell, but it went from one show in Bushwick and then it went up to Real Artways up in uh, Connecticut. And then, uh, and then Coach Leather where they were opening up a new flag, uh, flag store and uh, and they heard of it and they, they bought it. And, uh, and it was the same thing with that burden boat uh, piece that uh, I did a lot of ceremonies with that. And when I moved to Bushwick, it was time to finally uh, put it to rest. And I was going to, this is a funny story. I was going to chop it up that day because it was the, the day that the garbage came, the dumpster. And I got a call from Carillion, uh, uh, hospital in Roanoke, Virginia, and they said we want that piece, and uh, and so it it continues. They have it in the lobby. People come in and they're writing their burdens down, oh. and, uh, and every well, it's every about every four months now. The chaplain there does the ceremony. Wow! And uh, it started wow. out every six months, but they're they're filling it up so fast they get baskets and. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I was there for one of the early ceremonies and someone came up. It's like, you know, my daughter's in, you know, my child's in uh, cancer treatment. I come in here and I'm just waiting. And it just is so healing to be able to write down these notes, knowing that there's going to be a ceremony. So it's lovely when, when our art finds homes like that. Hi, Beth. You're muted. Hi. Um, I was just curious to know if you have a contemplative practice of your own that kind of 
guide you towards your shamanic pieces or? Um, yeah, well, I, I you know, roughly say I'm a meditator and, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I do that, but I don't, I don't find that that really takes me into my artwork so much. You know, that's just for my own quieting, yeah. quieting the mind and whatnot, which I'm sure it helps, but uh, the, it's so strange where, where sculptures come from or where the artwork comes from. It's, it usually builds one off the next one off the next, and, uh, but then every once in a while, there's one that goes in a radically different direction. And, uh, but uh, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Joanne? I got another question. Do you, in your creative process, do you sketch out your ideas or do you just start creating? Um, it's, um, I would say I sketch pieces out maybe 20% of the time. Most of the time it's, uh, especially with these uh, pieces that I'm working off of stones and whatnot, I find an interesting rock stone and that that's my starting point. And then I just start building off of that. And uh, uh, I tend to work best if I just follow the, follow the material, follow the process. And uh, it's, uh, it's hard, but, and then once in a while I do sketch one out and uh, that's, that's a nice relief because I know where I'm going. And uh, there, there are times overall, I will start making templates of, of pieces while, while I'm working on it. I may cut a full size piece of cardboard out before I use the actual material. Um, and the other thing with my process, I use pretty humble materials. I don't spend a lot of money on, uh, on my material. So I can afford to make mistakes. And uh, so it takes the pressure off of needing to uh, make every cut count. Who's your favorite architect? Hmm. Um, there's a, uh, uh, boy, what is his name? Um, what is his book? Uh, He's a uh, Italian architect, uh, Sac. Uh, oh, um, oh, that's I right. I don't know. Yeah, I've lost his name. Sorry, but uh, yeah, he he it's takes the uh, old uh, uh, sacred spaces, churches, and uh, cathedrals and whatnot, and does these amazing, um, uh, very modern uh, details to them, and. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I, I'm. Uh, Carlos Scarpa? Yeah, Scarpa. 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 Yeah. Because yeah. one of them has a very strong uh, Frank Lloyd Wright feel to it, doesn't it? it yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, as far as influence, I would say the as the architects, I my I really loved, especially when I was making furniture, the arts and crafts uh, era. So the Gus, the Stickleys, the Green and Green Brothers, the uh, the the Frank Lloyd Wright. I, I really love that, uh, uh, that idea of truth of materials, uh, craftsmanship, uh, uh, where every, it, it, there's not, it's not about decoration, that every component has a, has a reason to be there. And, uh, and I think even now in this day and age, you know, I used to read the, uh, the books on the uh, on the arts and crafts movement. And that was a response to the industrial age and, uh, and getting back to working with hands and honoring the handwork. And that's something that, that's something that comes up in the classes that I'm teaching is that, you know, the, the intelligence of the hand. And, uh, and the theory that I've been coming up with lately is that I think humans, I think one of our problems is we've gotten so in our heads, you know, we are incredibly intellectually advanced. And I think we've lost the connection to our, our heart and our emotions. And my theory is that the hand is the one that connects the heart and the hand, or heart and the, and the mind. It's yeah. also sounds and smells, mm -hmm. touch. Yeah. yeah, there you but, go. But I, I mean, one of my, my current pet peeves is we're taking kids and have it, especially right now, it's all in the head, yeah. nothing is real, and kids need to connect to the physical world. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And actually, one aspect of that, apparently children who use um, handwriting and who write in a notebook rather than use a computer learn better and remember better. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something really, you know, I, our hands are so primal. You know, it's, it's part of, you know, how we have become what we are. And, uh, and to lose that, I think we lose something about our humanity. And, uh, Speaking of the hand, what is the duration of your sculptures? Like the, the shortest amount of time you spent on one and the longest amount of time that you spent. What's the time um, that you've had? Yeah, I don't have, it's very rare. I mean, once in a while I can put, uh, do a piece in a, in a few hours. Uh, that, that's, that's very rare and uh, obviously I didn't show any of those pictures. But typically a uh, piece will take uh, in in the about a week I'll do on the small pieces and then the larger pieces uh, three three to five weeks yeah and uh, I don't really have I don't do anything that has a duration much longer than that and uh, so I'm I'm anxious to see the piece completed and uh, and move on to the next one as well. Although I see this, you know, my, uh, the, the property here I see as, as a sculpture and, uh, and that I'm looking at a, a 30 year span, um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> well, I like the contrast that you have of the rock and the wood. I really love that organic and then man-made. I love yeah, that contrast you. that you have. It really, it's just really gorgeous. Absolutely oh, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. It's something I really enjoy that, that contrast. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, I have one question um, to Court. Uh, Court, um, I have done so many wood blocks in my whole life and I have saved a lot of the, the blocks and I want to make a sculpture of, out of <laughs> for my mm -hmm. garden. So one day, can I give you a call and ask your advice? Oh, please do. Yeah, I love I loved doing that. Yeah. Just a little advice because I don't know, I, you don't need to do it for me. I just don't know the technical aspect of a lot of things. Oh, so, I've... yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but I'm sorry. I I I mute my video. I, you can't even see me. It's Ilse Schreiber and all. Okay, I don't know. Oh, oh, now I'm back. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. yeah. Someday when we can walk around again. Please, please, yeah, please do. I would, yeah, like I said. That would be I, great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I I used to when we moved, I took like like about hundred blocks and I splitted them. And my friends were all upset. I said, are you crazy? You should have made a sculpture out of them. <laughs> so now I have so many again. So I want to do that next time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. 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 Thank you. This was really wonderful and really nice. Okay. Great. We, we yeah. never know how it's going to be on Zoom. I mean, that was a. It was, uh, yeah. it was yeah. phenomenal. Kurt, it was phenomenal. Thank Enjoyed you. it so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. I'm glad you didn't trip. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. That too. But thank you so much for, you know, opening up your studio and sharing your work. Um, this is great. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is, um, you know, um, I'm very excited that people, that, you know, Karen, uh, two weeks ago, and you, the, the more people who share their work with each other, the, you know, the more enriched we all are, I think. Yeah. It's really... Um, yeah, I think it's important at this time. You know, and this is a great opportunity. So mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate that, uh, um, that you've instigated this, and uh, it was really nice to, uh, to bring you all over. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Two weeks from tonight, Barbara Hertzfeld is going to host us. Oh, great. Um, and uh, I'm hoping more people will step forward and volunteer. You know, this can be, a, a, however, you know, this, each, each person shapes it, how they want their visit to be and what they'd like to share.
Uh, I, I love to do it someday. Um, I just have to learn. I broke my ankle, so I'm just learning how to walk oh. again. <laughs> so, okay. well, no, no, you don't have to feel sorry for me. I'm walking now, but it's very <laughs> slow. So okay. once I can move better, I want to uh, go to my show you my studio. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm also trying to learn the program. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a new learning curve. Yeah. For all of us. <laughs> Yes, I watch the video five times and I hear hello and that's it. You know, I try to learn this. <laughs> yeah, well, Meg's been helping me out because she's been in school and so she's been uh, spending a lot of time on Zoom. So she's a resident expert. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, Natalie just offered to do a uh, okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow up with her for a date. Natalia. Did I say the wrong name? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to follow up with you for a date. So that's great. Um, I'm very excited. This is, um, this, this is, is what I dreamed of when I suggested it. Yep. And it's also very what, good. you know, what are, what I've dreamed of for a long time in terms of us really sharing with each other. So I think that, um, I'd love to hear from more people, and I love watching the people who step forward. This is great. We're gonna see you in two weeks, Barbara. What? You have to unmute yourself. I'm just curious. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious the uh, about. Um, I wanted to ask Kurt and um, anyone else who's done something like this. Does it work better? if I'm in my studio walking around with my phone or my iPad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wondered what is the best method for um, showing work and talking about it? I, I do think that an iPad might work better than a phone, just okay. because it's slightly bigger. Except my iPad is an iPad one mini, so it may not be able to take Zoom. <laughs> I, I mean, I think there are two things I would say. I think that um, both Karen and Kurt um, shared, J, you know, images of work with the screen share, and then the studio visit with the phones, and I think that that works pretty well. And the other thing is, I am available for a run through. Oh, Res that's great to know. Whatever oh. you know, we'll yeah. set the time and we'll do a Zoom, just the two of us, for you to run through it, if that makes oh, you happy. Thank you, Robin. That's really oh, wonderful of you. Thank that's you. That's a good suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Barbara. Yeah. Um, this is Meg, Kurt's wife. Hi, Meg. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that I have an iPad mini. And yeah. The, with the screen sharing function, is really limited. Okay. I figured because it's so slow. It's so old okay. and so slow, so. Just so you know. Yeah, the screen sharing, it doesn't. Oh, but you can do what Kurt did. Use your, use your laptop or computer for the screen share of images and then yeah. move to your phone for walking around your studio. Right, right. But the tricky thing with that is I was able to do that with two accounts because we, you know, I came in with Meg and then, and it was weird, you know, when I went out to my phone, you know, it was, we had it set up earlier, but then I, you know, I had a small, you know, a small screen. So I think doing the run through is really important. Yeah, yeah. So Kurt, you used two accounts. One, one was yeah. upstairs to the other one was, okay. Yeah, All right, yeah. you can do one account. Yeah. I've, I've done Zoom teaching where I have my laptop and my phone both. So you oh, can really? do it as one person from one two account. devices. Oh, Just okay. two devices. Cool. I have a feeling I'm going to be calling on my daughter, who's 22. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> She's my techno. Well, I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. Oh, please. Please. Yeah, but, you know, we're here to help each other, so yeah. we'll figure it out. I was thinking that it would be great to be able to do it with one person. Thank you, Robin, for offering that. Oh, you're welcome. Very generous. Thank you. I will take you up on it. Happy to help. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Hey guys. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, really, unfortunately, I didn't, I, I forgot to record till about halfway through. So the people who weren't here tonight are only going to get half of it. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. okay. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks again.
All right. Thank you again, we'll sir. Fabulous. 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 Thanks, Thank Joanne. You. Okay. See you okay. next Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Welcome.